When the Sea of Galilee dries up, that is the time when Israel will no longer rule the world. I love this hadith. Guess why? Because George Bush could watch the Sea of Galilee going down. <laughs> and Tony was his name? Tony. Yes. And Ariel was his name? Sharon. Yeah. And the Jews? They can watch the Sea of Galilee going down and drying up. And they can realize that the moment is coming. Ya Muslim! Haza Yahudiyun wa ra'ifa ta'ala faktul! That moment is approaching as the water is drying up. I love this hadith. Why is Iran's oil? This was uh, last night's lecture. I explained this last night. That when Israel wages a big war, which is coming up, hmm, which is why Bush has to attack Iran, hmm, so that Israel can now wage the war and not appear to be an aggressor, which is why Abdullah of Jordan has his suitcases packed already. When Israel wages a big war, in order for her to become the ruling state in the world, she'll have to seize the oil. Saudi oil, Iraqi oil, Kuwaiti oil, etc. But I said, I don't think they'll touch the Iranian oil. Why? He asks. The answer is, without in any way being disrespectful to the Shia, without in any way being uncharitable to the Shia, no, that's not my method. Anyone who declares of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a usurper, is misguided. And anyone who compounds that by declaring that Omar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a usurper, is doubly misguided. And anyone who further compounds that by declaring of a third of the eminent companions of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, that Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a usurper is casting a massive vote of no confidence in Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasalam. The three of his foremost companions were usurpers, robbing people of their legitimate position, like robbers and bandits. So anyone who declares of this, like this, are a people who are significantly misguided. That's all. This is not an uncharitable statement. This is a factual statement. A less than valid, less than authentic expression of Islam will always be advantageous to Dajjal. Because if this less than authentic expression of Islam is the only Islam which can mount a successful Islamic revolution, the only one, then the Muslim masses around the world will eventually be told that is the valid Islam. Because that's the only one which has succeeded in the world. So you should give up the authentic Islam that you have and adopt that less than authentic Islam. Why would Israel want to dismantle such a state? No, it will not be in the, in the interest of Israel to attack and seize the Iranian oil. But having said this, let it be clear that this is meant not, this statement of mine is not meant to show any disrespect whatsoever to the leadership of the, is the revolution in Iran. Imam Khomeini and all those who fought the regime of the Shah with such matchless courage. I honor them and I respect them and I'll never say anything hurtful about them. Can you please give an example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about how he established the Khilafah? You have to take control of territory. Either exclusive control, that is you alone control, or on the basis of a, an agreement in which you share, you share control over the territory with others. The Mithaq of Medina 
was an agreement, a constitutional agreement, in which Muslims shared control over territory with those who are not Muslims. The ruler who rules over the Muslims in that territory would be the Khalifa over, over the Muslims. That was called a plural model of a state. But that plural model of a state only lasted for a short time. And then the Jews betrayed the Treaty of Medina and they were expelled. And now you have the exclusive model. When Muslims take control of a territory in the name of Islam and establish Allah's law in that territory, there will be one Jama'ah and one Amir. That Amir, on the condition that he controls the Haramain and the Hajj, would now be the, khila, the Khalifa. What is the role of Freemasons in the globalization subject? The Freemasons are an organization which have their roots in ancient Israel. <coughs> Banu Israel from the earliest times. The Freemasonry movement, however, was hijacked by the Europeans who put on the clothing of Judaism. European Jew. Yes, Sheikh Sadi, here we are. This is something for you. <coughs> it's a gift. <laughs> the the Freemasonry now has been hijacked by them and they're using it as a front organization so that they can stand behind. So you attack World Trade Center, but your fingerprints are not on the crime. Hmm? You're behind. You attack the full World Trade Center in 1991 and you put Sheikh Omar Abdurrahman behind bars, the, the blind Sheikh. But the Jewish fingerprints are not on the crime. You attack the U.S. A, a mission in Tanzania, the U.S. mission in Kenya, uh, um, Tanzania and Kenya, and you believe that we are blind. We know you did it. You attacked. But you blame Osama bin Laden for that. But guess what? One day, one day, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَالَهَا One day the earth will speak. And all your lies are now going to be exposed. And on that day we'll have confirmation for what we now suspect. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what role does the economic boycott of Israel and some American companies have on the return of the Khilafah? It is something that the Muslim com community should be taking seriously. Strange people, Muslims. What they should not be doing, that's what they're doing. And what they should be doing, that's not, they don't, they don't do it. Never in our entire history as a people have we ever used trade as a weapon. Never. Never. It is our enemies who use trade as a weapon against us. In Medina. Hmm? An economic boycott against us which lasted three years. Did we ever reply and respond with an economic boycott of our own? No, we never did. Why? لا تأكلوا أموالكم بينكم بالباطل إلا أن تكون تجارة أن تراد منكم Trade should be conducted in such a way that there is mutual benefit, says the Quran. So when you impose an economic boycott on somebody, you're hurting yourself. You're allowed to trade with your enemy because in trade there's mutual benefit. The only thing that is prohibited is to trade with the enemy at times of war, in weapons of war. That is prohibited. So an economic boycott on the United States of America and you're not going to drink Coca-Cola, well, you should not have been drinking it in the first place. Water is better than Coca-Cola. But leave that aside. We've never had an economic boycott in our own his entire history. This is the first time I've ever heard of an economic boycott. I know about Ronald Reagan, 
and his economic boycott on the Soviet Union, but not Islam. No. So from my perspective, it is wrong to engage in the use of trade as a weapon against anyone.